Never mind. I don't have to. Welcome back to Talos of Tech live on Twitch. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday, February 12th, at least where I am. I know it's different times elsewhere, but yeah, this is a weird subject that's been picking up a bit more traction lately. I think because Bloomberg's talked about it and Bloomberg has a somewhat reliable track record. Um, pretty reliable, I should say. I'm, I'm saying that like they're, they're spotty. Timelines can be spotty, but most of the time Bloomberg reports on things. Uh, they end up happening, but yeah, that now now the latest reports are claiming they're um, looking at you know three thousand dollar pair of VR uh, glasses, uh, not glasses, goggles. Really, can you have VR glasses? Is that really a thing? Is it really glasses if you can't see through it? Anyway, um, VR is weird, and I and I <laughs> I still have quite the uh, torn opinion on it because it feels like it's been around for a long time in fact back in the attic days way back in 2016 i remember talking about vr and the oculus and um talking about htc vive and people saying like oh it's just getting it's getting built up you know vr is in its early phases but it's gonna go it's gonna go mainstream it's gonna be big and it's grown and it's gotten bigger than it has been in the past but I feel like it's, I don't know what, is it too crazy to say VR is not mainstream? I don't know. I just feel like, unlike something like AirPods or the Apple Watch or the iPhone, that's a great example, or the iPad, you know, something that like everyday people are regularly using, um, I, I feel like VR hasn't really found a, a, a mainstream market yet. I, I feel like it's still, it, it's very it's grown. I, I understand that. I'm not saying it's shrunk since 2016. I just mean that the, the VR community is still somewhat limited to like tech enthusiasts, people that are into tech anyway, which is probably why we hear about it so much in the, in the tech field as that's what we talk about. A new VR headset, a new Oculus, a new HTC, whatever. Um, and I've tried these headsets on myself. I've messed around with them, but to me, I don't know what it is. It doesn't, they don't feel super immersive. It doesn't really feel like I'm in a virtual reality. It just feels like I'm wearing swimming goggles and you have replaced the mouse of a basic computer game with a gyroscope. That's really what it feels like. It's just like, okay, got it. Track head movement with a gyroscope and put me into a fairly basic virtual reality experience. And I don't know. The use cases of them have have remained somewhat limited. The the type of games you can play, the, there's some that are really good at v, with VR, whether it be Beat Saber or highly specialized games like Hover Junkers and that kind of thing. Um, you can do some gaming experiences, but it doesn't feel super main it, it mainstream. It doesn't feel like everybody's doing it. It feels like a small niche of the market that is interested in that type of thing. Um, in the same way that whenever I talk about VR, no, <laughs> those videos never perform as well. Um, not that I care. It's just I notice it. I notice when we talk about other subjects, uh, view counts in, in people tend to click more often. Uh, I have used a Vive. Yes, I have used an Oculus. I've, I've used all the latest stuff. Um, maybe not the latest latest, but I, I get the point. <laughs> okay. I've tried enough VR headsets to understand. I, I don't find them personally that immersive because... For one, it doesn't cover my, what's the term, peripheral, peripheral, um, hush Siri. And thank you, Chris Otham, for the Twitch Prime for eight months. Appreciate that. Um, if Apple VR comes with Beat Saber and all the songs, I'd buy it. <laughs> I'd be kind of surprised if it came with Beat Saber, to be honest. Knowing Apple, like, they, they have truly expressed fairly little interest in continuing support for the VR market. Like, they, they lost VR support on the Mac, and they don't really seem to want to fight very hard to bring it back. And they, they make no mention of it with Apple Silicon, of, like, you know, that this new M1 chip is going to allow for great, you know, virtual reality experiences or anything like that. Um, it doesn't cover the outline of my vision, so I still feel like I'm wearing goggles. And the games I'm usually... I'm usually looking at with a VR headset never looked that realistic in the first place. The graphics are never that high end and Apple going into this sounds, it sounds very hard to believe for me still because of 
how little software there would be to support it. So if this does end up being true, they really have to go all out with the with the software and basically develop an entirely new platform, uh, virtual uh, virtual reality experiences. But I, I've seen kind of Tim Cook talk about this before and say how like the, the use cases of VR are fairly limited because the user when they put it on is basically blind. You can't see what's around you, and that severely limits the um, usability of the product. If you can't see where you are and you can't see if people are around you or, or that type of thing, or if you're near a wall, I know that there's sensors and, and cameras on the headset that can help you realize, hey, you're too close to something, watch out. I get that, but um, for the most part, it's not something that can kind of seamless. It requires an insane amount of your attention. That's what it is. It's like... An Apple Watch can be on your wrist and be very, very subtle to the point that you don't even feel like you're wearing it. You only notice it when it taps you or when it makes a sound. Then you can interact with it, check it, and then call it a, call it a day. Same thing with a smartphone. Um, same thing with AirPods. You can kind of forget they're there and just they kind of blend into your background environment. And you don't even they, – they just fit seamlessly into your life, whereas I feel like virtual reality headsets don't – they they can't find a way to fit seamlessly on top of something we're already doing. I feel like they have to be an extra step. They require extra time for you to designate, of course, extra hardware. Um, some VR headsets require extra motion tracking things, but um, I doubt Apple was, Apple's would require that. It would probably just be able to motion track from the environment around it. But um, I agree, uh, Amon Sorrow, they would have to make some kind of app store that was just dedicated to it. And I feel like... It's a very bizarre time for Apple to get into all this. I mean, VR is not new anymore. I mean, it's been done for years now. And it's very bizarre to me that all these rumors are, are just suddenly popping out now. They're just like, uh, actually, now they're working on a $3,000 pair of VR goggles. And they're going to be a niche product. They don't expect them to sell very well. And I keep coming back to my theory. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it in uh, video form before. But my theory is that these these rumors or these leaks that we're hearing about aren't necessarily product. Uh, it's not necessarily a prototype Apple expects to sell. It's just something they're planning on use uh, that they're prototyping so they can use it internally to help develop the software for Apple Glasses, which sounds a lot more believable as a product for Apple to develop because. Glasses with augmented reality features could fit into our day-to-day -day life way, way easier because they're not as time-consuming and they don't require as much as your attention. You know, you can't really just throw on a pair of VR goggles and then go about your day the, the way you normally do. I guess maybe you could make the argument with, um, like, maybe desktop setups. Like, if you if you spend a lot of time sitting at your desk and you want to put on a VR headset so that you can have a virtual workspace and that kind of thing. Maybe there's an argument to be made there. I mean, I, I thought it might be fun to just play a little bit of uh, devil's advocate on the VR subject because basically I've started this whole stream by telling you why I don't think it's happening, uh, just to kind of get expectations realistic in the first place. But besides that, now, now let's talk about, like, well, what could Apple do with VR headsets that maybe no one else could do? Uh, one that came to mind is, like, okay, well, now they've found a way to make 5 nanometer chips uh, really, really power efficient and yet really, really powerful. You know, the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 MacBook Air, amazing devices that could rival that of the iMac Pro, which was $6,000 when it came out. Now the Mac Mini is, like, 700 bucks. And not in everything, but in several categories, the M1 is better. And let's say they find a way to miniaturize that and shrink it down. Like, what what if we get to the point where you basically can just use a keyboard and a mouse, and then you put on your VR headset, and maybe with motion tracking, it's able to recreate your hands in that virtual environment so that you can... You still feel like you can reach out. You know, we got the U1 chip with highly precision, with high, highly precise um, device tracking. Like we, they know where devices are in space, they know their orientation and that kind of thing. And the U1 chip really hasn't been utilized yet, and the AirTags haven't launched, so we haven't really get to gotten to see their full potential. Um, so let's just say instead of an iMac setup, you just put on your VR goggles. You got this giant, beautiful display. 
and you use your keyboard and mouse and you just kind of sit by yourself in your office with the headset on. Okay, I mean, maybe not a super popular one. I know it's probably been done with other VR headsets. I know it's a thing. Um, Mike says, Oculus Quest V1 isn't too bad in terms of boundary identification. You get near a drawn boundary, it shows you a grid. Shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as nothing is overhang. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm well aware VR headsets have methods of telling you where when you're near a boundary. I'm just saying that, you know, you can't... You can put on an Apple Watch or you could theoretically put on Apple Glasses and then get behind the wheel of a car and drive it around or go to work and sit at a desk and use it occasionally or go on a walk and be enjoying nature and still having these things. Whereas putting on a VR headset is like, you have to pay attention to this right now. Like it's technically a mobile product, but in a way it kind of isn't. It, it's about as mobile as a TV to the extent that, I mean, not necessarily, I guess, because it has a battery and I know you could use it without wires and all that, but like you basically have to have a designated room that you use a VR headset in, and you're most likely not going to be leaving that room and doing much else throughout the day. So yeah, you get the like object detection and, and boundary identification stuff, but outside of that, it, it's it's pretty like consuming. You can't be like playing something on the TV and checking your watch and checking your phone in the background just occasionally. Most people aren't gonna be like, let me just put on my headset real quick. Oh, okay, that's what that message said. Okay, put it off. So the the practical use cases of it fitting into everyday life is probably why VR hasn't exactly found its way into super mainstream markets and, and is still found kind of a niche where it is right now. Maybe someone will make something like the treadmill is in Ready Player One. Yeah, but that's what has been, it's been done. It's just not been done affordably. There's all kinds of like virtual treadmill type things, but even those are somewhat limited because if you're trying to do a VR experience on a moving treadmill, um, for one, they have to be very bulky and it's going to take up a whole lot of space like furniture and very expensive. And on top of that, like, can you crawl? Um, cause there are a lot of games where you crawl or, you know, jumping can only be done so well and instantaneously with a virtual treadmill and that kind of thing. But speaking on the subject of treadmill, one, one, uh, devil's advocate argument for the Apple VR headset that I think might actually work pretty well is if they partnered it with fitness plus, which you guys know, I'm probably, you probably know I'm not a huge fan of fitness plus, but if you wanted to make the argument that VR could help allow for different experiences out there, a lot of the fitness plus workouts don't involve you moving around very far. A lot of them involve you staying basically on a yoga mat or staying on, you know, an exercise bike or one of those like uh, rowing things that you pull and you go through like the rowing motion and that kind of thing, or a treadmill, just a typical regular treadmill, not the kind that adjust. But if they could transport you to different environments, especially I think this would work with a Peloton like competitor, um, instead of looking at your TV and them tell you what to do. Imagine you put on the VR headset as you sit on the bike, and now you can bike wherever you want. You know, I'm, I'm sure this has been done with certain VR experiences, but I just mean with the other uh, Apple integration of Fitness Plus, hey, we're going to bike this fast now, we're going to slow down, and they could transport you so that you're biking wherever you want, or you want to do yoga sessions, you can put on the VR headset, and you can do yoga like you're at the beach, and they have these really, really uh, high-resolution uh, 360 degree environments that you can work out in that just feel very zen because, you know, I, I could see them try to make that argument of, um, you know, Apple is, Apple's, we know everyone's stuck at home and everyone's spending so much time at home. So we're going to try to transport you to a whole new world and take you away to someone more peaceful and relaxing. So you feel like you can, uh, enjoy, uh, the outdoors, but you know, you could live in Kansas and just put on a headset and be like, okay, cool. I'm in Malibu. You know, I'm a different place. Obviously the climate won't be the same, but, <laughs> um, that's just one example I could think of, of like, okay, I could see Apple kind of pitching that because from what most of the rumors we're hearing right now are with this VR headset is that it would be not cheap. It would be like several thousand dollars. Um, easily over 1000 uh possibly up to 3000 or something like that and and Bloomberg was saying that it would be not something that sells very well it would be intentionally made to serve a fairly small market so i'm just trying to think with that kind of uh viewpoint what exactly 
what exactly would Apple pitch as as use cases or or reasons to buy Apple VR or that kind of thing? Um, they're probably going to sell as well as Apple Arcade Plus. Well, that's a subscription, but yeah, that was going to be my next one. Is that like yeah, you could come up with all kinds of VR experiences that are games. Um, and just make them arcade exclusives. You know, a lot of games that are on Apple Arcade are basically just skins of other arcade games. Not arcade games, but other games on the App Store. Um, I forget the name of it, but someone sent it in the Discord uh, a few months ago. They were just like, hey, if you like mini motorways, just get this game. It's not on Apple Arcade, so you can save a lot of money. And it's basically the exact same strategy. It's just a different design. And... It's made, I think, by I think it's made by the same developer. So <laughs> it's like, um, if Apple wanted to make their own version of Beat Saber, and then it's integrated with Apple Music. See, this is perfect. They've already got the streaming rights to a bunch of stuff on Apple Music, so they can build in all the songs and make something that's like Beat Saber, but just different enough so that they don't get sued. Um, they'll probably still get sued, but their legal team can afford that. So. With Apple Music integration, no, okay, we're gonna figure this out in the stream. I've, I'm gonna crack the formula. I'm gonna figure out everything Apple's gonna do with this headset before they even release it. First of all, don't think it's happening. But if it is, um, Apple VR—that's what I think they would call it—to answer your question. Um, just the Apple logo followed by VR. That's it. Or headset, maybe. Apple likes kind of simple, basic names. For the most part, you know, some names are more complicated. Don't bring up the iPhone. I know that's that's an exception because iPhone naming has been screwed up for years. But I mean, with like new product categories, they're like Apple Watch and then AirPods and then AirPods Pro, AirPods Max. So if this is a whole new category, I don't know. I know some people are probably thinking something with I, Apple Eyes or Apple Vision. That, that could be it. Apple Vision. That almost sounds believable. But I always sounds weird because you get it confused with iPhone, iPod. But that's just the letter I, not the word I, E-Y-E. -E. You know, it's just Apple Vision sounds believable. Almost that that almost they might even reserve that for the glasses. But most people, I think, are assuming Apple glasses are just going to be called Apple Glass because Google had Google Glass, and that feels like the natural evolution. Apple View, maybe. A bit more minimal, but a bit less specific. iPhone was a Jobs thing. Well, he explained with the iPod that the I used to stand for Internet, which is a bit dated now. So <laughs> wouldn't really make much sense for them to keep the I thing around. Now it's iconic. They couldn't. I don't think they could ditch iPhone now. It's just so well-known and so well-recognized. I mean, Apple barely got away with calling the Apple Watch what it is. Um, because there are still people to this day that call it the iWatch and just assume that if it's, um, you mean I is an iPhone? No, they explained the I was for internet. That was, that was brought up on stage and then that carried over to iPhone. But, uh, Apple VR thing will enhance the fitness, arcade, TV, music, and any other service I didn't mention. Yes. Even iCloud. Yeah, probably. Why, why not? Why not iCloud? You can view all of your iCloud photos in like a 360 degree dome like Iron Man. You know, when he uh, I think it was Iron Man three where he discovers the new element. Yeah, where he's like looking at all the pictures and stuff. He just blows it up. You can see like all your iCloud photos in a circle around you and just kind of scroll between them and watch videos and pull memories out. And it's motion tracking your hands so you don't need little. Uh, controllers. Maybe you could buy controllers separately for arcade reasons, but my here's my thing. For the longest time, I've always been pitching that Apple should start bundling up their services with hardware, and there's been lots of different ways I've pitched that. Either Apple One upgrade program with the iPhone upgrade program, like you get all these services for free if you uh, tie up your uh, credit score with uh, getting the new iPhone every year. Um, Apple Card users get all these perks and that kind of thing, um, which you can only really use on an iPhone uh, for the most part. That was two? Was that the one where he made the triangle? Yeah, it was two. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, the third one was when he 
gave it all up and then he comes back in the next Avengers anyway. <laughs> After he destroyed all his Iron Man suits, he came he came right back. So yeah, arcade is easy because you can just rip off every VR game that's ever existed, except now you can run those games probably at way higher frame rates and way higher resolution because Apple would be implementing their own custom silicon into the VR headset, which would mean great battery life, high performance, go all in on the GPU. Um Probably, like the reports are saying, like an 8K resolution, high uh, high refresh rate. So it'd be very interactive and very immersive, but it's going to be super expensive, right? So let's say the VR headset is pricey, but when you when you get it, you get all of these services included for um, not forever. That would be too much, but a, a substantial period of time, maybe like a year. You get Apple One Premiere for a year if you buy a three thousand dollar VR headset, and you know that that's that's perfect because it's just enough stupidity for the tech community to act like that's ridiculous. This is stupid, um, <laughs> and every everyone who's a fan of VR headsets to say that is that is absolutely not nonsensical, but it's good. It's a good enough deal because how much is Apple One Premiere again? Is it thirty a month? I forget. I've chosen intentionally to block Apple One out of my memory. Oh, they don't even have it on the homepage anymore. What happened to it? You got to click uh, learn more or something. You guys will tell me. I don't need to look it up. Uh, I think it's 30 bucks. All right, so 30 bucks a month. Yeah, I was right. That's $360 a year, which is if the headset is $3,000, then you're getting a $360 value of services. Yeah, I don't know. They, that might sweeten the deal a little bit. Maybe maybe they got to entice it more if it's like a three thousand dollar. Make it two years or something like that. <laughs> Knowing TV Plus, they'll probably extend your your subscription that much longer. So it's like, well, when you do the math, it's really under three thousand um, dollars. You'll just take another year of Apple TV Plus. I would not, but I will. I will use it as long as it's free. And then not even that, but you know, I might, I might just cancel it because I don't want it on my home screen, but <laughs> on my Roku. But I have not, I have not fallen in love with many of the shows. Apple One for ten years, yeah, that that would be a three thousand six hundred dollar services package. So probably not ten years. Then they would be losing too much on you. <laughs> but I could see that because. Honestly, if you really think about it, there are ways they can tie almost every subscription into the VR headset. Maybe not News Plus, and like you said, probably not iCloud. Um, that would be a bit of a stretch. But arcade, yeah. Music, yeah, with the Beat Saber thing. Or, oh, the lyrics. That was just something I was thinking of the other day. This is not related as much to VR as it is Apple Glasses, but you know how Apple Music has the really cool lyrics animation imagine if with vr with not vr augmented reality apple glasses put on when you looked at a home pod playing music the lyrics would float out of the home pod and the home pod mini even has the uh s5 chip in it i think so you can do the it positions itself in the in the room see your news when you wake up well that would insinuate that you go to sleep with the headset on which i don't think most people would do most people don't even like keeping their Apple Watch on when they go to sleep <laughs> wearing a... I guess it depends on how thin it is, you know? It is rumored with this VR headset that uh, Apple would make it very, very thin and light and probably go overboard with how thin and light it is and make it out of high-quality materials and all that. So if you can make it as thin as, like, uh, those... What are they called? Eye covers thing? Sometimes My wife wears it to bed sometimes. It's people who need complete darkness... You know, um, so if they could make it that thin, I don't think they can. VR headsets have to be a certain size and they have to be a certain distance from your eyes. Otherwise, your eyelashes interrupt with them. I guess you could just wake up and put them on. But see your news. I mean, you're just reading it with it on. I mean, yeah, I, I would I, I could see you using Apple News with the headset on. But man. The, the use cases are just so much more infinitely better with, with augmented reality. Reading the news and just pasting it on the wall in front of you sounds way more interesting than putting on a dedicated VR headset that you can't really see out of and reading the news through that, just scrolling through like a 
typical Apple News article, but it's just in a giant empty black void and you're just scrolling through that. Whereas going about your day, like you sit down at the at the kitchen table at the beginning of the day, you're eating cereal and you got your Apple glass on and you can just plaster the Apple News articles on a wall in front of you. So you're just eating and scrolling and you don't need to hold the phone anymore. You know, I could see that. News Plus animations making it into a comic. You can make it into a comic. Yeah, maybe News Plus could take advantage of VR somehow. I think it would be a stretch, though. Arcade, though, makes sense. Fitness Plus, I could really see transporting you into different environments so that you feel like you can work out wherever you want. Um, but augmented reality is always further away than people think. We were, we were talking about it in 2017, like Apple Glass. That's the next big thing. And we might see it by 2020. And here we are, and it's like, ah, oh, maybe 2023. So it's a, it's always a few years further away than people think because it's it's going to take some engineering masterminds to find a way to shrink down the tech small enough and to get the battery life good enough and to get the visuals on your uh, micro OLED display to work the high resolution. Really hope the AR glasses aren't completely overkill. It should be like the Apple Watch, not like the Mac Pro price and feature wise. I somewhat disagree. I think that it there's not really a chance of it being priced like the Apple Watch. Um, and feature-wise, I think the glasses would do way, way more. I think I, I think Sly Guy, I completely disagree. No disrespect, but um, Apple glasses have much more potential to do to unify the ecosystem like nothing else. If you can put 3D holograms wherever and it can motion track your environment and you can play games with augmented reality and you can get notifications with augmented reality and place... I just want tvOS on this wall. Boom. I want macOS here. I don't need a monitor anymore. I just need a keyboard and mouse and I can set this up, but I can still see my office and see people walking around. Um, I think that the tech that will go into them and the advanced processing power that they'll need to have to render high resolution things and do lots and lots of motion tracking, whereas the Apple Watch is a very, very low resolution. It's like sub 720p. It's like a 320p resolution. It's it's the the amount of graphics the Apple Watch has to support is very very low just to run a few watch faces, and the Apple Watch can be more built around fitness. Whereas the glasses, I don't think really need a big emphasis on fitness. I guess you could put a heart rate monitor in there or something, but the the glasses should really be focused on bringing 3D visuals into reality and making them more hologram like accessories, which. Obviously, yeah, it would be really nice if we could make them super, super cheap and make them super affordable. But at least currently, that tech is not cheap. And it's very, very likely that um, whatever the first generation of Apple Glass is, it's probably going to be pretty pricey because there will be nothing else on the market like it. They're going to have some very, very unique, different display technologies that go into it in order to make either a transparent display or use projectors to bounce images into your eyes off of a you know, invisible layer of glass in front of you and to make them also look okay, like look fashionable. You don't want to make a giant pair of augmented reality glasses that look like the Microsoft HoloLens because then you wouldn't want to wear that. You, it needs to be some something that you can feel comfortable with wearing even if you're not using it. And Apple does care about fashion. They They hired a bunch of fashion designers just for the Apple Watch team just to get the look down and they get the look the, the way they like. Um, so because of that, I think Apple glasses don't, they don't, they shouldn't really share much feature or price wise with the watch. I mean, I, I would love it if they could, but with Apple watches now averaging $300, I really don't see that happening. Um, that's why I've always said ever since Apple glass has been a hypothetical thing, I've been like, this is going to be easily a $1,500, $2,000 product in time. Sure. It will get cheaper, but um, what I don't want is Apple to be like, well, we can't make an expensive pair of glasses. Therefore, we're going to make a really, really dumbed down to not feature filled pair of glasses so that basically all they do is what Google Glass did, which is cover up a slight corner of your visual of what you see. And all it really does is send you notifications. I don't. I wouldn't really be excited for that if there was like no motion tracking of any kind and it couldn't cover your whole vision and all it could do is just put a text in the corner or the time or, or here's your activity ring status. Here's what your AirPods battery life is. And it's just always in the top right corner 
something super basic like that 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 exists there are augmented augmented reality glasses that do that and yeah that would be really cheap they could make something like that probably for 300 bucks or something really affordable but um i i i would have a lot less interest in it i i wouldn't really care to just get notifications out of the corner of my eye as much as i would love to have holograms and extra visuals all around me at any time i can just be like boom monitor here boom like and i, I i've talked about this in so many videos but apple just charged me for talking about this right now look at that 299 apple card they were like we loved your idea on the apple vr headset so we're gonna take it here's your reimbursement for it. <laughs> literally four minutes ago how dare they anyway what i want is when i'm using my iphone or my ipad instead of like the volume indicator on the side here like imagine with when you change your volume the indicator just pops out from the side and lets you know like hey here's what the volume is or when you get a push notification you're watching a video or something instead of having it drop down on top of the content you're watching the notification pops out from behind the phone and we just add all of, can you imagine how cool ios would be if you could have holograms that's basically what the glasses would allow for you could add visuals add things that aren't necessarily meant to be interactive but uh informative around the device if you had some type of apple glasses um you could fit like instead of you know the time or or, or battery like some people still complain about there not being a battery percentage in the corner with Apple Glass, you could make it a setting so that, you know, the, the battery percentage is just kind of motion tracked along with the phone as long as you have the glasses on. Same thing with the iPad. Well, or picture in picture is another great example. Sometimes the reason I, I haven't really utilized picture in picture much with the iPhone, maybe it's because I got the small 12 mini, but um, no, to answer your question, no, I don't think it will replace the iPhone, but it will help it. Um, I'll go off on a tangent about that too. But basically, uh, the reason I don't use picture in picture on my iPhone very much is because it's usually always in the way. Whenever I do picture in picture, the, the media player is always ending up on top of some button. And there's not a lot of space here on our smartphones. They have to be very, very efficient with buttons and, and layouts of things to the point that... Um, you know, I feel I feel like I have to move the little media player around whenever I do picture in picture. And sometimes I have to move it around with the iPad, but not as much. With Apple Glasses, if you activate picture in picture, the the little media player can just pop out to the side of the iPhone. And now it's playing right here. You still have your full iPhone display. You can still use full size Twitter, all your email, and still have the full size keyboard, and have the video playing and motion tracked along with the iPhone. Or because we have LiDAR and motion tracking and it knows your environment, you could just say, picture in picture, I want to slap this on this wall. You know, it's a bit inconvenient to have to put a TV in on every wall of your house or the ceiling if you want, if you're laying down in bed, just be like, oh, I want a TV there. But with Apple Glasses, you could basically put a TV wherever you want. Like, no joke. If, if you were able to display 3D holograms on top of both eyes, 3D tracking, high resolution, like, what a lot of the patents are and stuff are talking about. You could be lying in bed and be like, I want to watch this video, but I also want to be browsing Twitter or checking email. You just slap it up on the ceiling, slap it up on that wall, cover up that window. The possibilities are quite endless. I'm, I'm just spitballing here a few ideas. I'm sure developers have thought of countless more ideas of, of how you could utilize Mac OS through Apple Glasses. You don't need an iMac or a monitor anymore. You just sit there with a keyboard and mouse and boom, you have this screen however big you want it, however the dynamic range you want it, you know, you can adjust to everything and you can take it with you. You can be on the go and stuff. It, it just changes everything to be heavily, heavily invested into augmented reality. But I still, I, I know I'm, I sound very pumped about this, um, but I still don't believe it would replace the iPhone because there's a bunch of things that fundamentally the glasses couldn't do very well. For one, uh, keyboards. Um, yeah, there are, there are technologies that let you like turn any surface into a keyboard, um, and just like track your fingers as you're typing. Uh, you can do some stuff with the keyboard, but it's, it won't be as socially acceptable. There, there are certain tech features that are 
convenient but not socially acceptable. A, a perfect example I love bringing up is the Bluetooth earpiece thing. When I remember back when California initially passed a law that said you can't talk on the phone while driving, there were so many people talking about how the little Bluetooth earpieces were going to take off. And in the future, it was even in movies. I think that 2012 movie, that really bad one uh, by Roland Emmerich, <laughs> like that was that was kind of during the transition phase of like, oh, everybody's going to use Bluetooth in the future. I remember several people in the movie having Bluetooth earpieces because everyone was like, oh, yeah, in the future, we're going to have like hands free phone calls all the time. But obviously, Bluetooth earpieces, they exist, but they didn't really take off the way companies thought they would because they're, they're kind of awkward. And Breaking Bad even has a scene in the pilot episode, I think, or one of the early episodes in Breaking Bad where like guys who talk in public on the Bluetooth earpiece they come across as like jerks you know they come across as like obnoxious or or unaware of your uh, of your surroundings and that kind of thing so you just kind of look bad in general and and i think that same thing would happen with apple glass if you tried to replace your iphone just with a pair of glasses and you're scrolling and interacting with everything in front of you um your friends are going to think <laughs> you, whatever friends you have left are going to think you look weird and in public or at a Starbucks, you're just going to look bizarre. Whereas someone sitting at a Starbucks or a coffee shop or or sitting and waiting in line or just checking checking their phone down the sidewalk, this is a lot more socially acceptable because you're interacting with something. They can see it. You've got a device. You've got something you're staring at. That's where your eyes are. Whereas Google Glass suffered with this too because they tried to have a bit of an interaction where you could swipe through menus and stuff on the glasses, but now you don't know where to put your eyes. Your eyes have to stare somewhere. So I guess you could stare at the ceiling and just be like scrolling through stuff, but it would just look so bizarre that I feel like the social aspect of it wouldn't really catch on the way a smartphone would or, or a smartwatch could. And the other big one, probably arguably bigger so, is uh, glasses can't replace the iPhone because of cameras. Uh, it's a lot, lot harder to take a selfie with a pair of glasses. <laughs> I guess you'd have to take them off, but then you can't really see the selfie very well. Um, you could take some point of view pictures, but most people don't. Um, Google Glass tried that and they didn't really see much success with it. And you can fit much more cameras and much better cameras on a separate device than you could on something like glasses, which have to be very light, very low power consuming and, um, whatever computational photography you can get on a smartphone is going to be 10x better than what you could fit on a pair of glasses in time sure it could get better but you know it's you know what the back of the iphone 12 pro looks like it's not going to be easy to fit all three or four camera sensors onto a pair of glasses very in a, in a way that's subtle another one is facetime a lot of people do enjoy facetiming off their phone and it would be very, very difficult to try to FaceTime with Apple Glasses. Um, they wouldn't be able to see the other partner very well unless maybe they started selling external hardware that could, like, you know, Star Wars style, like, capture, mask out the person's body. And then they paste their body into your actual environment. But even then, like, certain FaceTime calls, you want to show other people. You want to show other stuff. Like, Look at this. You know, check out my room or check out the new kitchen. You know, that kind of stuff. So trying to do all that off of a pair of glasses would be very awkward. You couldn't really see who you were talking to. And um, <laughs> yeah, If you need to FaceTime, just get a mirror. You just have to hold up a mirror. Or you can just hold up a phone because it'll probably be much, much cheaper than whatever. <laughs> By the time Apple glasses come out, the cheapest iPhone is probably going to be something that looks like an iPhone 11, except with an A16 chip or whatever. Um AirPods used to be a laughable things. They became more socially acceptable. I'm sure glasses might. Eh. I disagree just because they've tried it. I mean, the Google Glass thing was not socially acceptable. AirPods can integrate into your life a lot easier just because it's just headphones, and there are wireless headphones, and they, they did get popular. They were ridiculed at first, but um, there's not much of a visual with AirPods. You know, people using AirPods are still looking at a device, so it's 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 kind of still piggybacking off of the social acceptance of the smartphone, um, whereas glasses wouldn't necessarily be like in my pitch they would they would be helping and in, in, uh, growing out like the use cases of iOS and iPadOS and macOS. They would make all of these different operating systems 
more useful and more exciting because of all the 3D hologram technology you could add to them. Whereas if you start removing something and say, okay, no phone, but just glasses, so I'm going to be sitting at a coffee shop looking at nothing, but I'm scrolling through Twitter. And also some people like to show people stuff on their phone. You know, how many times have you showed another person something on your phone? Doing that with glasses, I mean, is, if the argument is going to come back to, well, they need glasses too, and you just have to, like, airdrop the what you're looking at at them and screenshot it and send, I don't know. I just feel like, the reason I bring this up is because I feel like uh, people in the tech community are very jumpy at the idea of what's killing the smartphone. Which I understand because the smartphone is still, you know, there's been a lot of new exciting tech in recent history that is probably more interesting than talking about the latest smartphone. But smartphones are still like one of the most defining technologies of this generation just because of how how many people now have one compared to just just even like 10 or 15 years ago how few people had smartphones and now how plentiful they are and how much of our work can be done from smartphones and how much smartphones have changed industries that, you know, Uber or dating apps and being able to do all of it from a phone and cameras and, and the, the quality of videos and pictures. Um, it's, it's insane, but I think Apple just as much as the people in the tech community are still really, really interested in really trying to figure out what's going to kill the phone. What's the next thing that's going to make the smartphone pointless? And that's typically what a lot of people went with is like, oh, it's going to be some type of wearable. And I do remember uh, genuinely, I was I was just thinking about this the other day, like when I, when the Apple Watch first came out, I was in high school at the time and I was watching it in class because screw school, just kidding. Um, I, I was in like, a, what's it called? lunch free period i was i was i was doing whatever um and there were lots of people critiquing uh the apple watch when it first was unveiled and it was first out and people were like oh it's really expensive and and there were a lot of people i was talking to at the time a few friends that were like so basically apple's trying to put all of the features of the iphone onto a watch right like they're trying to make it so that the watch can be its own category and you don't need an iphone anymore right and i was like no that's not the point. It's still, it's still trying to heighten the smartphone experience. It's not trying to replace it. I feel the same way about the glasses. Basically, is like when the watch first came out, there were all these people that are like, "Well, event, you know, just like how the iPod when it first came out, it needed to sync with iTunes on a Mac or a PC, and then eventually the iPod became more independent." Um, and then I think the iPhone was the same way. You had to plug it in to a Mac or a PC with iTunes to get it set up. And they were like, well, in time, you know, iPhone eventually will become independent and won't need anything. And right now the Apple Watch needs an iPhone to set up, but eventually the Apple Watch won't need it. And I I personally disagree. I, I feel like making the Apple Watch not require an iPhone would not make the experience better. Like I, I can see the argument being made that um, setting up the iPhone without uh, – uh, without a Mac is easier because now you got a screen on here, you got a keyboard, you got an internet connection, so you can sign into your Apple ID. You can do, you can download the music you want. You can do it a uh, iCloud backup and that type of thing. So making this independent from a Mac so that it doesn't require a secondary device when you set it up helps the experience. It it makes it more independent and it probably goes quicker because you don't have to be like, oh, let me go get my Mac. Whereas the Apple Watch, if you tried to make it. I mean, theoretically, it's very possible. It would, all they would have to do is basically skip the whole pair with iPhone process and replace it with sign into your Apple ID. But the Apple Watch doesn't have a keyboard. And trying to scribble in your Apple ID and scribble in your Wi-Fi password and or dictate in your your passwords for everything, I feel like would slow down the setup experience and make it more complicated, whereas being able to just take a watch out of the box take a phone and just hold it near the watch and it's like boom okay we're going to set it up now it helps it it would it would probably be a worse experience if you decided to make the apple watch a complete separate thing and trying to manage a phone number on the watch all by itself and everything you can barely fit a browser on here ba just barely you can do internet browsing which kind of makes sense why they don't call it the iWatch cuz i stood for internet i mean it's connected but for the most part the watch doesn't surf the web very much um, it's really just meant to be an extension, an enhanced experience of the smartphone. And that's what I think glasses could be too, is just expanding 
the potential of not just the phone, but all your Apple products. I mean, you could you could add some hologram technology to the Apple Watch where you look at it and, you know, something like the Fire Watch face like I have here, that the flames could go beyond the screen or um, you could see the, the oh man, I, I've always visualized the idea. Like what if when you looked at your wrist or something like that, it puts some extra widgets onto your wrist here. So you've got your Apple Watch, but then here it puts like your battery percentage and here it puts like, I don't know, the latest text message or your your latest blood oxygen levels or here's your heart rate. And they could display so much more information with 3D holograms, but it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily replace much. I mean, maybe the Apple glasses could replace the Apple Watch, but I feel like the, the functionality of them would be serving such a drastically different purpose because the Apple Watch is all built around like, you know, timekeeping and notification management and fitness. So there's a huge, huge emphasis on fitness with the watch, whereas glasses I don't think could be as emphasized on fitness as much because they're just they're going to be light and thin and they're not going to be stuffing it full of blood oxygen sensors and heart rate monitors. I don't even know if that's a great place to measure your heart rate in the first place, but um, yeah, I I'm very I'm very convinced that we have not discovered the thing that will kill the smartphone yet. I I still I still genuinely believe the smartphone is going to stay. Um, I don't think something's going to kill it off relatively soon. I could be wrong, but you know, if everyone knew what the next big thing is, we'd we'd probably already see it by now. And uh, I think that the some type of rectangular device that you fit in your pocket that you take with you and you interact with is still going to be around for a long, long time. I I think that it it'll get thinner, the cameras will get better, the battery lives will improve, the processors will improve, the biomet the biometrics will get more reliable. There's all kinds of refinement that the smartphone can go through. But the idea of killing it off with something new, I still feel could be decades away. I, I know it feels like the smartphone is relatively new because most people consider the, the birth of the smartphone 2007 because that's when they unveiled the first iPhone. Um, there were kind of smartish, smarty phones before that, but they weren't really what we use today. Like the basic principles of how a OG iPhone works versus how an iPhone works today are still pretty much the same whereas smartphones before the iPhone were more like blackberries with huge keyboards and the OS was very clunky and uh third party applications were hardly a thing but um yeah I, I think that we've still got a whole decade left of refinement of just phones getting thinner and cameras getting better and speaker quality and Sure, there's going to be a small niche of foldables. I, I, I still don't believe foldables are going to take over and become the norm for everybody, but they're, they'll be there. I'm now convinced they're not going to die off. I'm just convinced that they're they're going to be about as popular as the Note series. You know, Some people do like a smartphone that has an S Pen, and I think some people do like a phone that can fold up, um, but most don't. Most phones don't have S Pens. Most phones don't fold up, and I, I think it'll probably continue that way. Especially as foldables get cheaper, so will regular smartphones. And there will be less and less people upgrading every year because the changes smartphones go through are going to get smaller and smaller. But um, the glasses I'm still really excited for. I think that's the next big thing for Apple. Um, but in, in the same way that I, I thought the Apple Watch was the next big thing. It was like them going into the um, wearables market was obviously huge, uh, a huge growth for them. And it also really, really emphasized and blew up the, the Apple ecosystem like we talked about today on the tech channel. A hundred million people with Apple Watches now. It's safe to say it's a hit. It's a success. It's doing very well. Um, but it didn't kill off the phone. And a lot of people, when it first came out, thought it would. And I think that's what... Um, I think a lot of people have the same mentality with the glasses. Uh, whether they come out in 2023 or 2027, when they come out, a bunch of people are... It's probably going to be very dependent on the iPhone. And people are going to think, oh, okay, well, it's, it's in beta and it's early. This is the first generation. Therefore, of course, it relies on the iPhone now. But in the future it'll kill off the need for an iPhone. You won't even have to use a smartphone anymore. And I'm like, eh, no. You'll still use a phone. Your phone will just be way cooler and way more useful if you have a pair of glasses. That's kind of the situation we are in with our Apple Watches now. Apple Watch didn't kill the need for an iPhone, but it did make the iPhone experience way, way better. Um, 
Yeah, Alman agrees with me here. He says they will just make the iPhone thinner and thinner until it's like a piece of glass integrated with the glasses. I don't I mean, yeah, it'll be paired with the glasses. I don't know if it will like literally integrate like connect with them on a physical level, but yeah, I I could see them getting super super small. I mean, if the Apple glasses get really reliable, I could even see them taking out a lot of hardware in the phone itself. Like you don't even need a screen. Just if you have a pair of glasses, we'll put the screen on this slab of glass and the glass will still have some components in it like cameras and a battery and maybe some, uh, you know, GPS type things, maybe stuff they don't want to fit onto the watch, but um, not the watch, sorry, the glass uh, components. They don't want to fit onto the glasses, but the glasses will take care of the visuals, visuals on the display. So uh, your battery could last a whole lot longer if it didn't have to draw battery from, uh, within the current chassis, that kind of thing. If they get Apple Glass to look like typical glasses, it will probably have a better chance of becoming socially acceptable. Oh, yeah. Well, I think they have to look somewhat normal. I'm just saying that smart glasses are tricky. It's not just a matter of making the glasses look normal. Um, because if, if they look normal, but you still spend extended periods of time sitting in a public place just staring off at nothing and you don't know where to put your eyes you know you could accidentally be like okay i'm interacting with the software here but you don't realize it behind the visuals you're looking at you're actually just staring at some stranger and that stranger's like why is this guy staring right at me what's going on it would be really awkward so if you want to avoid staring at people you either have to stare at the ground and be interacting with stuff this way maybe trying to interact with your eyes or if you're staring at the ceiling and you just kind of look crazy whereas airpods yeah they looked a little funky but when you're they don't require you to look at anything um differently you know you can still look at your phone i mean most people do look at their phone that's how they control their airpods so the, the smartphone thing lets people kind of have a, a bit of an escape which is, I think, more socially acceptable because it's it's really not that different from what we had a century ago. You know, if you look at old pictures, people used to say, oh, these kids in their smartphones all the time. But if you look at old, old-timey old pictures of, like, public buses and stops, everyone was reading newspapers or a book. You know, that was kind of what they had at the time. It was like keeping up with the latest information the world has right now. That's what we're doing with these. That's what you're doing when you watch YouTube and watch Twitch. You're, like, keeping up to date with what's the, what's the latest Back then, they didn't have computers and smartphones, but they had the newspaper, and there were just huge, huge amounts of people just sitting around looking at something that was separate. It wasn't like their eyes were just dead looking off into space, looking at the ceiling or looking at the floor, which would look kind of weird. But they, they were looking at things to, to read, or they were writing, or they had a book or something, something they could interact with. Um, and... That's kind of what smartphones and iPads have been. They just kind of replace the newspaper with something a bit more versatile that can do a few more things, and you can play games on it. Um, people did crossword puzzles in the newspaper, you know, that kind of thing. There's something to interact with. So I'm not trying to say, like, I, I, I just think some people probably could have seen that argument I made and just thought, well, Drew, before smartphones, the people would have said that looked weird to interact with a smartphone. Eh, it's not that weird because people were still interacting with little objects of some kind that they could read and stare at escape from reality instead of just eyes wandering um note isn't the best example it's currently dying yeah i think the notes kind of dying because of foldables though so that that the market of people that wanted the s pen are probably all kind of flocking towards foldables um let's see would there be a tv vr i don't even know what that means tv vr just yeah, could you put on the Apple VR headset and watch Apple TV Plus? Sure, why not? It's pretty simple. You just have to play the same content that uh, you play on a phone and just load it into a virtual environment. I never got that. That's been a thing on YouTube for a long time, but it always seemed dumb to me. I don't know. Um, Chilled Grizzly says, I remember the first time I saw AirPods on a place full of people. It was like an episode of Doctor Who, and now it's meh. Yeah, AirPods are everywhere now. I remember how much they got uh memed to death <laughs> but yeah it was uh it was it was weird and people were like oh that looks crazy that looks stupid oh they're gonna oh man people were saying all day non-stop people were complaining that oh the airpods are gonna fall out what uh, you, you're gonna lose them now it's like such a dated 
viewpoint. I think people still do that with a lot of tech. With a lot of new things and companies trying out new things, they're like, hey, we've we've tested this, we've ironed it out internally, and we think it's ready for prime time. We're going to mass produce it. We think you're going to love it. And then people go like, hey, those are going to fall out of my ears and I'm going to lose them. With a wired headphones, at least I don't lose them because if they fall out, I can just pull the wire again. And then Tim Cook went in some interview where they addressed that, and Tim was just like, the headphones fall out because of the wire. If there's no wire, they hardly ever fall out. It was like, oh, I guess we didn't think about that. <laughs> we all just, it was basically like complaining. This is an old, old example, but um, it, it's like people complaining that automobiles will never catch on because I'm trying to put hay, like I normally use a horse, right? And I can feed my horse hay and then the horse takes me where I need to go. But now I can't put horse I can't, I can't, sorry. I can't put hay into my car. It won't drive. It's like, yeah, you don't need hay. You just we'll use gasoline or elect electricity. <laughs> now we'll use electricity. And they're like, oh, I was used to it being a certain way, but I didn't realize in this new way it actually fixes the problem in the first place. What's the bandage? Oh, I went to the doctor today. I I was wondering if I angled it in a way that it's a bit harder to see. It's going to be more distracting in today's EV video, but um, I came back from the doctor's office and I was like, oh man, I w this is going to look weird. I, I, I bet it might look better if I just take the Band-Aid off. And he was like scraping up stuff off my head today. So I took it off and I was like, eh, that actually looks worse. So as distracting as this may be, um, it's, it's actually way worse underneath. So I won't do the damage of pulling it off. <laughs> It's gross. You don't want to see it. I can't put horse into my car. <laughs> Apparently glue doesn't fuel the internal combustion engine vehicles. Isn't some glue combustible? I don't know. <laughs> That's the dated viewpoint, I guess. It must be done the old-fashioned way. AirPods don't have wire, therefore I will lose them. <laughs> or and then you realize, oh, it's the wire itself that was causing them to fall out in the first place so it's actually better to not have a wire at all but people don't think that way people were so mad when apple ditched 30 pin too i know you asked tv vr i don't know what that means just watching tv from your vr headset yes you can do that i'm sure <laughs> or yeah th that's a more traditional example if i buy an ev i can't just stop at a gas station and fill up therefore ev sucks when in reality it's like yeah you can charge from home so you don't have to run an errand and go get gas you're leaving the house every day with the same range whereas with a gas car if you drive if you take a big road trip and you nearly drive your car empty and you leave it parked in the garage doesn't matter how long it sits there it's still going to have a very very low range as soon as you go back and you got to be, oh, like, I got to go get gas. Think of how many trips people have taken where they had to leave the house just to get gas. I mean, I know that's probably not most of them. Most people get gas when they're out and about, but it's still an errand that we have to run. And I feel like people don't bring that up enough when talking about electric vehicles versus gas cars. Is like, you don't realize how convenient it is to not have to go out and run an errand to get gas, do something on the side or... It, you know, leaving the house with a full tank every day. That's something people don't think too much about. Like Marquez did a video on, um, you know, deer electric car companies or whatever. And he didn't even bring that up. He was just like, you know, gas cars can go 400 miles. Electric cars can only go 200 most of the time. And that's not very good. Electric cars will only be good when they have range as good as gas cars. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, Gas cars range is from the pump, not from your house. Whereas electric cars range is from the outlet, which is a lot more accessible than the gas pump. Most people aren't um, most people aren't pumping gas from the uh, from their houses. That's not <laughs> that's usually not a thing. And gas is way more expensive too. They don't think about that. And so I think it's it's kind of up to influencers and a lot of content creators to kind of bring that stuff up. I feel like you shouldn't gloss over those details and be like, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But the range has to be just as good, and it has to be better. Or 
that it has to be cost just as much. It's like you're not taking into account cost of ownership and you're not taking into account most people live in a house and most houses at least have a 110 outlet that the car can charge off of. And if you don't, it's not hard to install one. It's not insanely expensive, but the money you save compared to all the brake pad replacements, oil changes, and gas, is, it's insane. The avocado said, did you notice the cracking in the latest podcast? I did. Um, so the podcast is mainly produced and, and hosted by Mr. Nick and Sweeney. So uh, without him, there would, no, there would not be a podcast. Um, unfortunately, Randy ran into some audio problems uh, that were unfixable on his end. So Nick, unfortunately, was was presented with the difficult decision of do we scrap the episode entirely and just not have one or do we put it up with the crackling sound? Uh, he decided to put it up with the crackling sound. Uh, it's his choice. I respected his decision. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it, it has to do with Randy's preamp, which has, <laughs> to be honest, it's been acting up many, many times. There have been several tech podcasts that did not get posted or had to be re-recorded because of that preamp so i'm hoping he can replace it soon um but i haven't i haven't actually heard from randy uh lately so i don't know um if he's going to be in the next podcast at, at the time of streaming this right now um we haven't heard from him from a while so we hope he's okay we we don't know where he is or what he's doing but we're, we're not able to get a hold of him right now so um there's a possible chance he won't be on tech or EV uh, next week, but um, as soon as we hear from him, we'll know for sure. But uh, currently, we haven't heard from him in uh, several days, so yeah, hope he's all right. We don't know. Maybe maybe he's just taking a internet hiatus or something. But yeah, we don't we don't know where he is. But yeah, the the crackling was from the the, the preamp on Randy's end. So I don't know. I just feel like if the preamp is going to be unreliable, I feel like he should just you know have a backup recording, you know, have an iPhone with the voice memo just in case something goes wrong. Um, or if you don't want to have two audio uh, recordings going, then just replace the preamp with something a lot more reliable. So um, he's become a monk. Yeah. <laughs> Randy's gone into monk territory, but yeah, I, I don't know where he is. We, me and Nick have both been texting him over the past couple of days and haven't heard anything. So I hope he's okay. We love Randy. We care about Randy want to hear from him didn't do his hump day show so i don't know hope he hope he's all right no he wasn't feeling well last week but i don't know why he would be off his phone in the first place but anywho i gotta get going i appreciate you all for tuning in this was fun i had a lot of uh interesting hypotheticals in today's stream and uh i probably won't be live again till maybe tuesday or wednesday which is my birthday i don't know if i'll stream on my birthday maybe but um Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Bye-bye.